Hello, today we'll see how to design a big nose with Chef3DX with two different methods. So we start with a basic file with a big nose designed only with a break on the profile. And when we look at the 3D view, it gives a big nose not so pretty with <coughs> a break in the rail. The first method is to edit the Dequan curve, which corresponds to the Dequan point on the slices. So we select the top view, <coughs> and in the list of curves, we click on Dequan to open its properties window, and we click on Edit it. The blue curve, Dequan, now has control points and we'll add a control point at the beginning of the beak. If I click here, I see it's at the position x equal 185. I copy, then I select this curve, I double click and I put the same x position. It has inserted a new control point at the correct position and then we move this point down to the center axis. We shorten the tangent and we do the same in the front. We can modify this curve a little to have a better shape. <clears throat> and now if we look at the tracing, the flat area is reduced to zero here at the beak and then we have a little spine. In the 3D view, it gives a big nose, which looks good, similar to what we see on real board. We just see that there is a, a still a little bump here, which is not easy to remove. So let's see now another technique that will all removing this bump. So we start from the same original file and this time it's a technique that is possible only since last update 9.1.0.2 which consists of editing the stringer curve in the top view. So I select the top view and I click on stringer top, I display it in red and I check the edited box, press OK. So we have now a central curve that is displayed and has control points. And this center curve, I'm going to shift it from the axis. At the nose. And now if we look at the slices, the slice at the nose, we see it's not going just to be defined between the center axis and the widest point, but it's defined between the stringer position and the widest point. And then we see that we have two cross sections that cut themselves at the center axis. And then at the end, <coughs> Separately will give us the intersection of both sides. With this technique, you do not need to draw the big nose on the side view. We can keep a constant defined nose thickness. And we see that the final result is going to thin out at the nose <coughs> because of the intersection of the slices we design past the center axis. It's not necessarily very intuitive like that, but <clears throat> it works well. And that's close to the way we would shape a big nose by hand, which is pretty much like shaping the rail past the center axis. And we see that it gives us a nice nose beak, which has no break. 
And to modify the nose, we can now play on different parameters. <clears throat> we can move back the point where the Schlinger starts to deviate from the center axis. And we see that it moves back a little the, the beginning of the big nose. We can also, on the nose slice, play on the deck one point and even on the rail point at the same time. And we see that it bends a little the blue curve. And that makes a big nose that starts much sooner. Voilà, c'est fini. Soon. À bientôt.